friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and I have been so excited this week because I was finally able to begin planting my annuals back here in the back patio. We've been here many, many, many times before y'all have been with us this whole journey of creating this brand new space in our backyard. Patio is still coming, but the focus of today's video is about planting these beautiful annuals um, and begin filling up this space with just all things beautiful and plant-based. So right here, I'm standing um, beside the one of the columns of a seating wall. Remember, this is a unique stone piece. Um, this is, oh gosh, the name. Yes, thank you, Jerry. It is the Weston Urn from Unique Stone, um, and this is in the dark walnut color. So those of you who are familiar with Unique Stone, this is dark walnut. Now, I was inspired. I've been wanting to do a container like this for probably about two years, and the inspiration came from this picture off of Proven Winners' website. I just think it's just an elegant, beautiful arrangement. And so I took that idea and I tweaked it to fit my space 
and the colors that I wanted to use. Now in the picture is using Over Easy um, Super Bell. I didn't know what I wanted to use. I love Over Easy. It's a gorgeous flower, but it was this beautiful thing, Morning Star, that when we got the plants back in January, early February to begin potting up and growing to sell at the nursery, there was one little bloom on the liner and I was like, I am building my entire patio design plan around this plant because it is that light pink. It's just beautiful. I think it's elegant and I loved it. So in this urn, um, we have um, the fiber optic grass. This is just really fun. So this will be kind of low and wide. On each side, we have the Super Bell's Morning Star. So they will fill in and trail, but they're not going to overtake my urn because I want you to still see my urn. Um, so if I had put a Vista in here, it would have just overtaken the entire urn and just come down. While I love Vistas, this is not the right application for that. Then on each side back here in the back, this, these are our two Diamond Frost. Diamond Frost, of course, will get a little bit taller, light and airy. The Morning Star, the Frost, the Fiber Optics, the grass will all begin to interplay with one another. What grass is this? Christine, you're going to edit this out. Skyrocket? Skyrocket. Then in the back is the centerpiece, we have Skyrocket. It is an annual grass from Proven Winners. And right now it's a, it's a strong solid green because we had it in the garage for those two nights of frost freezes. So out of the sunlight, it lost its white um, stripes. So this will have beautiful white stripes on the edge and will have a solid green um, down the middle. But it will do the plumes, it will be beautiful. Again, so we're working from a thriller filler spiller concept in these urns. I love them already. I cannot wait to see them as they grow and develop throughout the season. This is not on irrigation simply for the fact that I can't figure out how to have this on irrigation without seeing the line, the irrigation line. Because this is a stone patio um, on a pedestal, on a column, if I were to run a, a irrigation line up from the bottom through the urn, which you could obviously very much do, then at some point I'm going to have a drip tube coming out, which is not the look that I'm going for. Um, I suppose we could drill a hole through this. I'm not drilling a hole through this cap. So this will be hand watered, a little TLC. Um, yeah, so we'll figure that one out, but that's what we're going to do on that. So you can see I have that one then coming over. The next one is just, you know, the identical um, urn. It is planted the exact same way. I have already, of course, I used my Proven Winners potting soil on this, and I have gone ahead and already given it one dose of their water-soluble fertilizer. I will do that once a week to give them nice, strong, lots of food, because remember, food equals flowers. I want this to be nice and full and healthy and dark green, so I feed it once a week. Now, coming over here, ta-da! This is that lower bed that we um, was not in the original plan for the patio, but we brought it, designed it this way, loved it. Originally, we were going to put the fountain here, um, realized it was just going to be, it would fit, it was just going to be too big, so we wanted to move it out. So, what we have in the center, this is the Proven Winners, it is the Blue Chiffon Rose of Sharon. This is a standard tree form. So this beautiful plant gives us some great height. It will give us gorgeous, a light blue bloom on it. It will be fantastic. So that will be here in the center. And then on each side, I have two David Austin roses. So we got the David Austins um, almost a month ago, got them planted. I did not show you that because I was literally out here at 8.30 at night planting them um, and it was pretty much in the dark. So they are here. They're waking up. These two um, get the least amount of sun probably than the others. So they seem to be a little bit slower as far as flushing out. There is a growth on them. They're just a little bit slower, especially this one 
on this side, um, but I have given them some land and sea, I've given them rose tone, and then they are mulched. So hopefully they'll start to kick in when the heat hits. And then in front, I have four snowdrifts. So again, this is the Supertunia Vista snowdrift. So where I didn't want to use a Vista in my urn, this is the perfect location to use it because here, I really want to have just a carpet of white blooms and it's okay, there's room for it to spread and spill over a little bit. Now, these snowdrifts are gorgeous. These were in gallon containers that we had started. Um, very vigorous, beautiful, pure white blooms. And again, they will just fill in this area. When I water soluble fertilized my urns, I went ahead and did these guys as well. And then yesterday I got the boxes planted. So let's move up to the porch and let's see these beautiful plants. Come on. I have been dreaming about planting these boxes for months and months. We were inspired by some sweet friends of ours, Sean and Randy, on their back porch, their back deck, they have built-in boxes instead of railings. And I just thought, what a neat, glorious idea is that? So when we were redesigning this whole area, I knew from the very beginning that that is what I wanted to do back here. So my sweet daddy, who is a professional woodworker, um, who is retired, he'll do projects. He's great. You just have to ask him. And so he actually um, put down the Trex boards for us and then built these custom boxes for me. They are made out of pressure treated lumber. Then it's just the facade of the Trex. So the Trex is actually just to make it look pretty. Um, and then he put on a wooden cap for me. This one is 12 feet long. This one is 14 feet long. They are, we were trying to decide how tall they were going to be. And I said, Daddy, I don't care. Um, let's just make it easy and let's make it three Trex boards high because that way he wouldn't have to cut them. So they're roughly about 18 inches high um, and about probably 14 inches wide. Now, on the bottom, the soil is not, there is a bottom of the pressure treated lumber. So it's an actual box. There are drainage holes every um, 12 inches throughout here. So there's great drainage in here. Currently, this is not on irrigation simply because I wanted to get these things planted. And I knew that Jerry's to-do list was 500 miles long. And if I put, ask him to go ahead and put the irrigation in, it would just be better that we can easily come back in here and run some drip tube once we get the irrigation all hooked up for the beds and all of that. So there's not irrigation currently, but right now it doesn't matter because I filled these boxes completely with the Proven Winners potting soil. Jackson and I um, heaved and hoed all of the PW soil bags. In here, you want to fill the, your containers all the way with potting soil. Don't put some sort of filler in the bottom. You want your roots to have lots of room to grow. So it's filled completely with potting soil. And then the fun began. I, it was a hot mess. There was white PW pots everywhere. There was soil everywhere. I was just in absolute heaven. So let's just walk through and let me tell you what the plants are that are in here. So once Jackson and I got this whole thing filled up with the potting soil, then the fun began and I got to plant it. There is basically a repeating pattern throughout the entire um, boxes because I want it to be cohesive. So the plants, a lot of the plants that I used in my urns, I have repeated in here because I want my whole space to really tie in together and just flow. A couple of years ago, I'm just the girl that was like, woo, all the colors, just throw it in. But as I'm growing as a gardener, I'm trying to tie everything in together. So we're just gonna go through and, and tell you the plants that are in here. So in the back row, we have the Cara Lee or the Cara Lee um, Petite Pink Guara. It is a fantastic flowering um, plant that for us will actually be a perennial, um, but it gives you that light, airy, um, nice, really rich, kind of on the darker side of a pink blooms. So as it grows, it will have that wispy effect. When the wind blows, it will move also with the, with the wind. 
Then we have the Diamond Frost. Diamond Frost, again, just like in the urns down on the patio, nice and light and airy. All these are going to intermingle together. Of course, the Morning Star Super Bell from Proven Winners, repeating that. This is a container, so I can use that. Um, I will not use this in my flower beds because they don't like to stay really wet. I also have um, the Mini Vista White Super Tunia. So down below, I use the Snowdrift, which is the Vista. Very, very vigorous. I did not want to use Snowdrift up here because I was afraid that it would overtake the boxes. So the Mini Vista White looks basically exactly like a Snowdrift, a little bit of a smaller bloom on it, but it will not have the vigor of the snowdrift. Yes, it will still get full. Yes, it will still trail, but it will not consume my whole box. So we have that. Then we have icicles. This is part of their proven accents line. This will give me that gorgeous silver green foliage, more upright, more of a very fine leaf. So that gives me a whole different texture. Tying into that with the almost the exact same color is the Dichondra Silver Falls. We love this plant, right? We used it last year in our wheelbarrow over at the nursery. People were madly in love with it, and rightly so, because it gives you, again, there's no bloom, but there's that gorgeous, gorgeous color on it, and so it is a massive trailer, so it's a big spiller. So I only have two on each side with the hibiscus in the middle, the Rose of Sharon, rather, in the middle. And then, so that way when the Silver Falls is trailing down, they will kind of flank on either side and be balanced with that Blue Chiffon Rose of Sharon. So we have that in there. And then um, a couple of dahlias. Now the dahlias were not part of the original plant because I've just not been a real kind of a dahlia girl, but we have them growing at the nursery and this is Cozumel. Cozumel is just this massive, huge, beautiful pink flower on it. And I was, was blooming at the nursery. And so I said, oh my goodness, I am getting some of those and putting them in. So there's actually four. There's two in each box because, of course, they will get nice and tall, nice and thick, dark, dark green um, leaves on them with those big, huge, beautiful, pure pink blooms on it. will be magnificent. Cannot wait for that. And then a special addition to this bed, these boxes, again, that I was not planning on, but we had a sweet customer, Tiffany. She and her husband came down from Chapel Hill to visit us and to go shopping. And this was a couple of weeks ago. And we had a lovely visit with one another. And as they were getting ready to leave, she brought me this tray full of plants. These were plants that she had started from seed and she just thought that I would enjoy them because they were unique and different. And it, I am, I'm like so excited. So one of those plants was the bunny tail grass. So there she gave me three of them. So I've used all three of them in these boxes. So I have one that is centered in this box. One is in the corner and then one is centered in the other box. So if you're not familiar with a bunny tail grass, First of all, it is the softest grass you have ever felt in your life. It's like lamb's ear on steroids. So extremely soft. It doesn't look soft, but it feels very, very soft like a bunny. And then when it blooms, it will do these great little puff balls, just like a little bunny tail. So it will get, this will be kind of high. It'll be in that, could be anywhere from 12 to 20 inches tall, about 12 inches wide. So I just imagine it that it will fill in the space. I've given it room to grow. And I like it too because it's a whole different shade of green. So it's not a real dark, dark green like the dahlias are. It's not the silvery blue green that the icicles and the silver falls are. It's more uh, a little bit of that chartreuse, a little bit of a brighter limey green. So I think it will be absolutely gorgeous once everything fills in. Now, as far as how am I going to maintain and take care of this? With the Proven Winners Potting Soil, of course, it has some of that slow-release fertilizer in it already, so I did not add it to the box. Again, just like my urns and my snow drifts down below, I will use the water-soluble fertilizer once a week on this to give them that food because, yes, there are a lot of plants in this box, 
but I'm going to have to feed them on a regular basis so that they will grow to their biggest potential. Now my plan for this is that you will not be able to see any kind of ground mulch soil um, once they are fully grown. I want this to be big. I want this to be full. I want this to be an absolute showpiece of colors and textures and movements because it's gardening and this is fun. Now, I realize that this is a really big project right here. And I hope that this is not intimidating, but that you, if you're inspired by this, that's all I want. Maybe there's one plant in here that you absolutely love. That is fantastic. That's what I want. Maybe you really like the combination. Do it in a, on a smaller scale. Just like I was inspired by the Proven Winners picture, how they did their creation, their container, that wouldn't work for me because it had like a Prince Tut grass in it. Well, the Prince Tut would be too big for my urn. I took that idea, tweaked it, and made it my own. So I hope with this and these plants, that they are an inspiration to you, that maybe you have all shade. So take this, twist it, make it your own, switch out the plants that you have available to you and go with it. Now, one more thing that I'll always do on my containers, my plantings, is you will notice that I have top dressed it with mulch. I always finish my containers, plantings, and I add the mulch to the top layer of the planting space. I don't want, like over here, it has just the potting soil is exposed. I ran out of mulch, simple as that. But I thought this would be a great teachable moment to show you the difference as opposed to what it looks like with no mulch on it versus what it looks like with mulch. So one, we do it before the aesthetics, right? It looks prettier, it looks clean, it looks finished. When you water your plants, the soil doesn't, you know, splatter up on your plants, so your plants will stay cleaner and neater. But there's also a lot of horticulture reasons why we do this. One, it holds the moisture in the soil a lot better. So I have put probably an inch, two inches of mulch down. This is just a hardwood mulch that I have put down, but it helps retain the moisture in those pot in that potting soil. This is full sun. This will absolutely bake in the summertime. So I want to hold as much moisture in my soil as I possibly can. It does it. This top layer over here is already dry. I guarantee if I were to pull this mulch away, that soil underneath would be nice and moist and damp. So it retains the moisture. Weeds, if any weed seeds blow in here, which they will, um, this is a great place to germinate because it has a, you know, the soil in it that so they're like, woohoo, new home with fertilizer. So they're going to grow a little bit easier, germinate here as opposed to the mulch. And then finally, something that maybe you don't think about is that the mulch will act like an insulation for the roots of the plants. So in our case here at this time, that mulch is going to actually kind of keep the roots a little bit cooler than is as if there were no mulch there. So it really kind of insulates, just like you have insulation in the roof of your house, it keeps your house at an even temperature. Same thing with the roots systems with your plants. I didn't always do this. I started doing this years ago um, and I saw instantly a massive difference in my plants. I think for us, it was a moisture issue that it helped retain my moisture and the insulation. Um, and then of course it just looks good. So I will go ahead and finish this out and mulch all the way down. Um, we will keep you updated on this. You know we will as we come through and do patio updates. Um, again, I hope this has been an inspiration to you. I hope there's something that you have gleaned from this that you can use in your own garden. Um, and as always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends. <music>